Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist, my Sunnyside discography up here, live at National Sawdust, Benign Strangers, Hope of Home, Perrier Street, hopefully there'll be a new one soon. My improv book, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary from Mel Bay, and there definitely will be a new uh, Mel Bay book coming out soon this year, Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. And uh, yeah, I've been thinking about uh, the tune Come Rain or Come Shine. I want to talk about that today. Uh, uh, Harold Arlen song from mid-40s. I guess it was in a, a musical with Johnny Mercer lyrics. And uh, yeah, it's it, kind of one of those uber standards in that everybody recorded this song. Uh, every vocal, major vocalist has a version. Gosh, uh, Bill Evans' Portrait in Jazz opens up with a heavily <laughs> reharmonized Come Rain or Come Shine. I don't know if you'd want to learn the song from those changes, beautiful as they are. Uh, man, everybody. Uh, Ray Charles in the late 50s, that's a, a real definitive vocal version. Wes Montgomery on Full House with Johnny Griffin and with Kelly, Paul Chambers, Jimmy Cobb. Um, and it's one of those tunes where I don't know that these days it's, it's as played as much as, say, like a, it's not a jam session tune necessarily along the lines of Stella by Starlight or all the things you are, or I'll remember April, or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of those tunes that's going to come up, and it's kind of complex. Maybe that's why. Uh, and it's definitely one of the one like, gosh, like just about every tune where there's a lot of variation on the chord changes in certain spots. So I'm going to go through it uh, in the key of F and try to keep it, I guess, as simple as I can. <laughs> while making some reference to the more complicated versions of, of the tune. I recorded this in uh, early 2000s with uh, the band The Hot Club of New Orleans, great, uh, you know, Django Reinhardt inspired group who are still kicking, I believe, down in, in New Orleans. But uh, our first CD that we did, I did two CDs with them. Uh, we did a version of this and I actually arranged some, it wasn't strings, right? It was violins and clarinets behind my guitar solo when I was like, 21 or 22, if anybody wants to probably find that somewhere out there, but basically we did it in D flat for the vocalist and that kind of messed me up for a while because it's, it's a tricky tune to transpose. I don't know if it's it's kind of almost like Stella by Starlight level uh, trickiness to move to different keys, but I think most people do it in F. West Montgomery's in E flat, but Bill Evans is in F, and Coltrane is in F, Ray Charles is in A flat, but F it's going to be, I believe the Jazz Messengers are, are in F as well. So. You got an F major chord, I'm gonna love you. Then like a 2 5 to the relative minor to D minor. Come rain or come shine. Then G7 high as a mountain, C7 deep as a river, F major. Rain or come shine. That's the first eight bars. Going into the second eight bars, you've got a 2 5 to 4. But then it goes 4 minor. B flat minor 6, say. Yes, when I F minor, and back to the minor one, which is kind of interesting. B flat minor, and I think most people here would kind of do like a walk down to a G minor seven, or G minor seven flat five to C seven. Excuse me, my nose is itching. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about some variations in a second. But let's let's start with that. So the second eight bars: B flat minor six, F minor, B flat minor, G minor seven flat five, C seven. Then there's a cycle of uh, sort of minor two fives here that reminds me a little bit of, uh, it happens in, you know, multiple tunes, but this tune has a little bit of Isfahan in it, or maybe vice versa, um, although in a different key. So after that G minor seven flat five C seven, we have B minor seven flat five D seven, never bet me, A minor seven flat five D seven. And then there's a ton of variation about what happens next here, but I'm just going to go with a repeat of A minor 7 flat 5, because I'm going to stay true. D7, G minor, or G7, C7, F. So that second eight bars, B flat minor 6, F minor. B flat minor 6, a little walk down, maybe A flat minor, G minor 7 flat 5, C7. B minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor 7 flat 5, D7. Same thing. G minor, C7, F. So many, many variations on that little section right there, but 
we'll call it like that for now. Then the A section kind of repeats. But instead of doing a 2-5 back to F, it goes B minor again to E7. To A7 for two bars. And then there's a cycle of dominance, which again reminds me of that uh, second half of Isfahan a little bit. D7. G7. And then like a little turnaround back to D minor. That's basically the song, so that, that second half, one more time, F major, 2-5 to D minor, and then B minor, E7, A7 for two bars, D7 for two bars, so those people go up a half step, side slip a little bit, G7 for, for a bar, almost two bars, and then a little turn around back to D minor, B minor 7 flat 5, B flat 7, A7, so that's the basic structure of it, and uh, West Montgomery, they, they pretty much follow that in E flat, um, although <laughs> I was talking to a student earlier today, it's, it's kind of funny how, you know, records from the sort of classic jazz records from the 50s and 60s and before, you know, um, sometimes people play some weird, <laughs> not everybody in the band is on the same page all the time. Um, on the chords. You can kind of tell what they meant to do sometimes. Sometimes you can't because uh, people just play wrong notes. And it's kind of funny how, you know, the fidelity of the recording, I think, and the expectation of the people making the record and producing the record wasn't that, uh, you know, say a bass player playing some weird notes in a certain section of the tune. That wasn't like a deal breaker for the take. And, you know, if you don't listen too closely, you can't really tell. It's like if you go back and hear a Ruby My Dear studio version from uh, Coltrane, Thelonious Monk. That's like some weird notes. But that's kind of what happens on Come Rain or Come Shine. But it's pretty close to what I just played in the key of E flat. I think when they get to the, uh, in the second half, that B minor, E7, A7 thing, they play B dominant 7, E7, E7. And I think that's what we did when we recorded it with the Hot Club of New Orleans. Um, so, I also want to talk a little bit about, so that was a lot of, you know, a lot of two fives, right? Minor two fives, dominance two fives, maybe regular two fives. And, you know, a lot of these tunes, uh, when you get closer back to the way they were originally written and conceived and orchestrated, the two five one is not exactly, especially the minor two five one, it was not really the coin of the realm as far as I can tell. You know, you didn't, you don't really encounter that in the same context that you do in you know, modern jazz and soloing and up to the present day. So to talk about a little bit about the Ray Charles version, which, you know, is a more, uh, I guess, gospel influenced, you know, sounds like Ray Charles. <laughs> He's sort of a category uh, of his own. So they play it in A flat. And I'll say, maybe I can shift back and forth from A flat to F. We'll see, that shouldn't be too hard. But I just love how he starts off just the very first part. It's like A flat, and it's that nice. Then there's the fifth in the bass. And then instead of like a minor 2-5 to F minor, you know, in that key, they go uh, like E diminished to C7. Or maybe, you know, C over E to C7. So you get this like, I'm gonna love you. Like nobody's loved you. Then F minor. Come rain or come shine. Then this is the same. 2-5. They kind of go right to A flat seven, and then this part's kind of interesting. He goes D flat minor, A flat minor, D flat minor in his key, and instead of you know walking down to a minor seven flat five, two five one thing, he just goes right to the dominant. So in the key of F, that would be as if we went B flat minor F, B flat minor C seven. Instead of and kind of functionally, it's the same thing, and I'm going to try to do the rest of this what Ray Charles does in the key of F. So then after the seven, instead of going B minor seven flat five E seven A minor seven flat five D seven, you know that thing we just talked about. From the C seven, he goes to, to D minor to an 
A minor. So instead of B minor 7 flat 5, E7, a D minor, which makes sense because the top, you know, the upper structure of a B minor 7 flat 5 is a D minor. So okay, that makes sense. And then an A minor, instead of an A minor 7 flat 5, all right, doesn't, isn't that different. And then the gonna stay true if you let me, he does a crazy sequence of dominance. Um, it's basically, let's see if I can get it in this key, it would be, so if he goes, uh, it would be, gonna stay true if you let me. So like, <laughs> let's see, let's go, so, B flat minor, F minor, and it's a slow tempo. It was just one of those things, excuse my singing, so D minor, don't have a bad I'm D7, D flat 7, C7, and I kind of heard an E minor 7 flat 5 or C with E in the bass, and then E flat 7, D7, D flat 7, C7, F. So you can see how that would be a little bit tricky to, to solo on, maybe, in a, in a modern jazz context. And so instead of all that business, we just have A minor 7 flat 5 to D7, G minor to C7 to F. Bill Evans does a similar thing. I think in there of just a whole crazy cycle of, cycle of dominance if he goes through the entire cycle of force. And if you want to check out the Bill Evans changes, there's a nice a cool video on YouTube that I just saw a little while ago that has the piano transcription of with chord symbols on top of his recording from Portrait and Jazz, which I think is probably his maybe his best record in my opinion. That and everybody digs Bill Evans or uh, you know, top of the heap for me with Bill Evans, but Anyway, yeah, he does some stuff towards the end that's kind of complicated, too. But uh, one other thing with the Ray Charles version, so when he gets to the second half, again, we kind of, let's see if I can convert this to key of F. So we got, uh, I'm going to love you, second half, too, like nobody's loved you, come rain or come shine. Then he goes, instead of going right to B minor 7 to E7, happy together, happy together, to A7, he skips the B minor and goes G7, happy together, then to an E7, unhappy together. Into A7. So again, a G7, B minor 7, flat 5, G7, D minor. It's all the same stuff up in the upper structure, you know? How he does the end, they go back to, instead of going to like D minor. When he gets to the I love you always part, he goes back to one. I, I love you to G7, and then a 2 5 to the minor, but instead of minor, he goes like it's like a D7 sharp 9. So that's so hip. So we have like, you know, D7, G7, and then instead of going to D minor, F major, G7. B flat 7, A7, D7 sharp 9. So, you know, some variation there. And I think if you went through, uh, you know, Coltrane's version on uh, one of those prestige records, I forget which one, has some, some variations in those spots. Um, in terms of playing on it, you know, um, again, there's not any real tricks I have, just, just following the changes, you know. Uh, eight bars you're pretty, you're pretty cool like you know one two five to relative minor two five back to one and this part sometimes when I'm playing since you have that a minor seven flat five to d7 repeated I'll kind of like the second time through imply so if I've gone B minor 7 flat 5 E7, A minor 7 flat 5 D7, I'll kind of go up to an E flat 7 D7 the second time. So maybe like, oh sorry, I. You know, just to kind of break it up a little bit so I'm not repeating A minor 7 flat 5. And then... Out 
the dominance. And you got some nice places to do some blues, uh, blues vocabulary. But I'll play a few choruses on it uh, right now and try to explore this tune. So yeah, really beautiful standard recorded by everybody, but you know, there's some spots that are worth uh, looking into and maybe checking out what different people have done. And yeah, Ray Charles, y'all. Portrait and Jazz. And uh, let's see, what's the one called? Uh, Full House. Wow, I, can't, I almost forgot that. Wes Montgomery, Johnny Griffin, Wynton Kelly, Paul Chambers, uh, Jimmy Cobb, one of the great guitar records. All right, hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 